Welcome everybody, my name is Petr Matsuiko, I'm a viral specialist in Anritsu, and today I'm going to present to you the WLAN standard IEEE 802.11ax, which is also known as Wi-Fi 6. In this slide we can see the overview of recently used standards. On the left we have 802.11n, in the middle we have 802.11ac, and on the right side we have 802.11ax. Historically, uh, N standard was officially released in 2009. AC standard was released in 2014. That's AC standard wave 1. A year later, it was wave 2. And AX standard was released recently in February 2021. Also, we can name 802.11ax as title of this presentation tell us as the Wi-Fi 6, the AC standard can be named as Wi-Fi 5, and the N standard can be called Wi-Fi 4. Let's start with the overview of mostly used WLAN standards and the market situation. In green, we have the statistics for 802.11 N standard and earlier, earlier means A, B and G standards. As you can see, the trend is, it's uh, starting to be deprecated. Then we have the AC standard. In orange, we can divide the standard onto two waves, wave one and wave two. So it's still strong from this figure. However, it already hit its peak and now it's in decline. Whereas in purple we have the AX standard, which is Wi-Fi 6 and also Wi-Fi 6E. I will tell you the difference later during this presentation. But as we can see, it's starting to to grow in in its strength in, in the global shipments, and it's only about to hit the peak for the global shipments worldwide. Compared to the previous IEEE WLAN standards, AX standard was created to address some of the test cases, so-called usage models, such as airport and trade station, shopping mall, also can find its way in public transportation, in buses, in cars, and so on. It has its place in e-education, and of course it should uh, cover also the super dense urban street deployment. So basically, everywhere where many people at the same time need reliable data connectivity to the internet. And this reliability can be achieved using some of the key features found in this table in purple color. On the left in this table, we have different features of the N. AC and AX standard, as you can see, the first one to compare is the maximum data rate. So there was a big, big jump from the N standard to the AC standard, whereas from the AC standard, there is not that big jump to AX standard. So the acronym for AC standard was very high throughput. So the orientation was to enhance the data throughput of the N standard. Whereas the acronym for the AX standard is also known as the uh, high efficiency one. Basically, it takes the AC standard and makes it more efficient. The use of physical resources is much better handled. Then there is no really difference in the channel bandwidth between the AX and AC standard. AC standard wave 2 has the support for 160 megahertz bandwidth, which is the same as the AX standard. The first difference to be noticed is the symbol time duration. So we have four time increase in OFDM symbol. Then of course, different cyclic prefixes, length or the guard interval length. Now we can go up to 3.2 microseconds. Another particular interesting feature here which occurred for the first time in WLAN technology world is called OFDMA. So, so that's the new 
kind of multi-carrier modulation apart for already existing OFDM in the WLAN technology world. Then we have different subcarrier modulation. So prior to the OFDM symbol, which is transmitted through the air, uh, it needs to be put together by using subcarriers. Uh, these subcarriers are modulated by subcarrier modulation. We can go up to 1024 QAM which is higher order modulation than the maximum 256 square found in the AC standard. And then the last feature to be discussed is the subcarrier spacing. So as we had the four times increase in the time duration of the OFDM symbol, we have four times decrease in the occupied uh, space in the frequency domain. And that's the inverse relationship between the time domain and the frequency domain. So I will start with the first important feature found in the AX standard, and that's the uh, use of 3.2 microsecond long guard interval, which translates into increased coverage distance. So when signals arrive at the reception site, they may interfere together thanks to the delay spread created by signals multipath propagation. And such signals multipath propagation results in intersymbol interference, which may signal decoding more prone to errors. So as you can see, we may have some symbol which arrive at, at the correct time, but then there may be some another uh, symbol. It's the same symbol, but it took different path. Let's say we have the distance of 700 meters, which roughly really roughly translate into the delay of 2.4 microseconds. And if we would like to use the existing guard interval time periods, uh, we would have issues with this intersimple interference. Whereas when we use 3.2 microsecond long guard interval, we have no such issue. So it's addresses uh, the usage models such as airports, stadiums, and so on. Then another new feature found in the AX standard is use of OFDMA modulation. What is the difference compared to OFDM? So as you can see, traditionally, we have the communication, uh, which is in nature serial. So first station one needs to communicate with the access point, then the station two, then the station three, and so on. And here you can see the all allocated frequency band is used by one station. Whereas in OFDMA, the frequency spectrum is divided into smaller chunks. It's called the resource units. Uh, the smallest resource unit is only 2 megahertz wide. And uh, you can allocate different resource units to different stations. So this frequency band is divided uh, for more stations or clients for the communication. So it's much more efficient. And this kind of communication, it's in nature in the parallel one. So we can communicate or more station or clients can communicate at the same time using the same channel. Wi-Fi channel. Then the last feature, which was noted in color purple in the table, was the multi-carrier or this is subcarrier modulation. We have higher order modulation. We have 1,024 QAM compared to 256 QAM. And how does it work? Why can have or why we can achieve higher data rates. So we have more physical signals to map bits into. Uh, when we have 1024 QAM, we have 1024 points in, in the amplitude and in the phase, which translates into 10 bits per symbol. Whereas when we want to use 256 QAM, we can map only eight bits per symbol or one byte. So we can transmit per one electrical signal two more bits compared to the previous modulation. 
And as I mentioned, the acronym for the AX standard is high efficiency. So how this high efficiency is basically achieved with this AX standard. So first of all, we need to understand how the data rate is calculated. So first we need to take the number of data carriers, multiply it by the number of bits per sub carrier. Uh, really important aspect here is the code rate, which is the ratio between the data divided by data plus redundancy. Redundancy is because of the used error correction codes. Then we have the number of special streams, so it can effectively multiply uh, the data rates, the gross data rates of uh, one single or base communication chain SISO. And then we need to divide all of these parameters by the simple time plus adjust it for the guard interval time. As the example here, let's have a 80 megahertz wide WLAN signal. We want to have only one special stream. So we have the SISO system. The code red is 56. It means we have five communication bits or data bits and one bit in six. One in six bits is basically the redundancy because of used error correction codes and the guard interval is 0 0.8 microseconds so those guard interval can be found in both ac and ax standard so for the calculation as you can see the biggest difference is in the number of data carriers we are longer time but denser in frequency for ax uh, the opposite is true for ac then we need to multiply by the number of bits per sub carrier. We have 8 bits here, we have 10 bits here. Then the code rate is the same. We are using only one communication chain, SISO. And then we need to divide it by the simple time plus guard interval time. So when we are proceeding with our calculation, we get these values so for the AC standard we have data rates up to 390 megabits per second whereas using the same resources physical resources can go up to 600 megabits per second with the AX standard so this is how the high efficiency is achieved then we have the Wi-Fi 6E term. The E in Wi-Fi 6E stands for Wi-Fi 6 Extended. So the traditional Wi-Fi net Wi-Fi technology also is supported on new 6 GHz band, which ranges from 5.925 GHz up to 7.125 GHz. The new band is 1000. 200 megahertz wide. Uh, as you can see in the US, the wall band is allocated for for the usage, whereas in the European Union and also in the UK, we have only part of it. So here in Europe, uh, the six gigahertz band ranges from 5.925 gigahertz up to 6.425 gigahertz. Also, in this slide, uh, we can see the 6 GHz band adoption per country. As I mentioned, not all of the spectrum is allocated in the UK or in Europe, but a part of those countries, uh, all of the others allocates uh, the full, full band, full 6 GHz band. And even though Wi-Fi 6 is yet to hit its peak, as we could see from the figure in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, we can already discuss about Wi-Fi 7, which is called IEEE 802.11BE. It targets much higher data throughput rate than Wi-Fi 6, as I mentioned Wi-Fi 6. The main goal is to be as much efficient standard as possible, whereas Wi-Fi 7 again targets high data throughputs while uh, while taking 
the high efficiency features from Wi-Fi 6. It also enhances some of the existing features. So here in this standard, the maximum usable modulation, subcarrier modulation is 4096 QAM. We can go up to 16 by 16 MIMO, so up to 16 special streams. So we can basic data rate of size of system multiplied by up to 16. And then there are some new features such as hybrid IRQ, borrowed from LT technology or beamforming, which can be found in 5G. So basically, the WLAN standard is really getting closer and closer to the cellular technology in terms of the features supported. What can Unread to propose you in regards of WLAN testing? We have two testers to choose from. The first one is called MT8862A, which is suitable for design verification and product development. And the second unit is called MT887PA, which is suitable for mass production facilities, but of course it's quite handy for prototyping purposes. Let me start with the first tester, MT8862A. From the legacy standards point of view, we do support A, B, G, and AC standards. So the AC standards either go up to 80 MHz by default, or there is this option which enhances the maximum possible bandwidth. This was uh, introduced in wave 2 of AC standard, and it goes up to 160 MHz. We are interested in AX standard. So normally we can choose from four PPD formats, Unread 2, MT8862A, uh, supports the single user PPDU and trigger based PPDU up to 160 megahertz of bandwidth using SISO. Then the unit itself can operate in two kinds of modes. The first one is the network mode or signaling mode where the connection is established on the IP layer. And then we have so called direct mode or non signaling mode where the connection is not established on the IP layer, uh, you need some sort of DOT control, but the communication itself is not active. Then, of course, the unit itself got support for encrypted communication, which can be done using the security type of WEP, but of course, there is the support for WPA version 1, version 2, and version 3. All of them personal and doesn't matter whether MT8862A acts as the access point or a station. Then this unit can do two kind of tests. We have the transmitter test and then the receiver test where this one is also called the sensitivity test. And this unit has many useful features. It has very simple GUI uh, to control all of the measurements. One of the best features here, namely the frame capture feature, where you can capture the data of the communication. And if there is any problem, you can export it to your PC in that PCAP file format and it can be easily open and analyzed using Wireshark application. Then another feature to be mentioned in here is the possibility to have IP data end-to-end -end connectivity. So it can be used to accessing the internet or you can verify the server applications. The second unit is called MT8870A, which is illustrated in here with its smaller sibling MT8872. This is more handy for prototyping purposes, whereas the bigger 
one MT eight eight seventy A is more suitable for manufacturing facilities where many devices need to be tested. So a part of WLAN technology, this is all in one tester. We do have support for the Bluetooth technology, uh, for the uh, GPS and other uh, geolocation technologies. Uh, from Seller World, we have support for 5G waveforms, LT category M or NBIOT, LT Advanced, WCDMA, and many, many more. But we are interested in WLAN technology. So we do support IEEE 802.11a, b, g, and a c standards, so the legacy one. But of course, p standard as well. Then as we are interested in AX standard, there is the support for single user and trigger-based PPDU format in CISO regime. And for what are some of the upcoming plans is to have AX standard also improved uh, for improvement for multi-user uh, PPDU in CISO regime and also single user. Uh, which now is gonna have the MIMO support, not only size. If you are interested in both products, uh, you can read more at our on our official website, anritsu.com, and that is all from me. Thank you for your attention, and have a nice day.